Time for the tube. It's our weekend edition. We have some apples, some colors, and a robot. Yay! Here we go. In the studio are Gabi Tartakovsky and Shai Ringel. Hello, how was your week, Gabi? It was good, and now it's getting better. Opa, um, Shai? It was good, but now it's getting worse. Lovely. <laughs> Let's start. This week was the week when there were no tech news, only Apple news. The whole world, and especially the media, held its breath for Apple's keynote event in San Francisco last Wednesday, shivering in anticipation for the tech giant's announcements. How does one company with just 14% of the smartphone market manage to dictate the whole news cycle? Well, maybe we'll find the answer in their latest commercial. Take a look. This is iPhone 6S. Not much has changed, except it responds to the pressure of your finger. So you can peek into stuff. And pop stuff open, which changes how you play a song. Read a text. Read an email. Read the news. Wait, you read the news? Yep. Of course you do. Now you can change apps like this. Pay up more places like this. And the new color looks like this. It's rose gold. It's awesome. And Siri is more helpful than ever. Hey, Siri, show me photos of tortellini. Here are some images of tortellini. Maybe get takeout? The camera shoots 4K video now, which changes how your movies look. Nice. Even selfies have changed. Now your screen is the flash. That's going to get, like, a million likes. Thanks. Actually, photos themselves have changed. They move now. You just touch them. So, yeah, that's what's changed. I want one. <laughs> Is this just good marketing or are they really the best, Shai? Both. It's really good marketing. The fact that they don't uh, spend a lot of money on marketing. They used to spend much less. They spend more uh, these days because the competition is bigger. But they use it very smartly and not a lot of money in marketing. But they have a very good marketing uh, uh, strategy, which is holding those keynotes and making everybody wait uh, uh, for really big news. And the fact that uh, a lot of companies waited till after the keynote to you know make some new products news and stuff is uh, 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 sign that their strategy is working really well because the last two weeks we had almost no news all all we had were Apple rumors so let's talk about the media okay guy why do you think the media loves Apple so much what's their secret there Well, as Shai said, it's not about the innovation, it's about the presentation. And Apple does package its products in a very convenient way for other media outlets to simply post the five top innovations that Apple is presenting and the key differences. It's very approachable. And I think that Apple, by holding those keynote addresses, which are basically like a company presentation within the company, you see... Tim Cook and you feel like he's working for you. It, 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 you don't get that from other uh, Silicon Valley CEOs. And that's a key luring aspect mm-hmm. in the entire Apple marketing scheme. Because when Google rebrands with a new logo, with a new social network, you feel compelled by it because it, it changes without asking you. And then everyone has an opinion. With Apple, it's just a teaser, it's just a preview. You're basically watching trailers, so you're not in a position to really object to it, and also you feel less likely to resist it because you are being lured to it. You are invited to hear the latest innovations. You know, it's interesting because um, there's lots of press. We are a tech show in the media, and Shai, none of the bad criticism actually sticks. I mean, we talk about, you know, the Apple uh, music that isn't really going too well and Apple music and the watch, but how come nothing bad sticks to them? Um, it's again, it's really good strategy. The fact that they do two big keynotes a year and they put some stuff here, some stuff there. They have a winning card every time. Uh, like, Today they had the iPhone, a new iPhone is always a winning card because everybody is going to talk about. So if the iPad uh, Pro 
and the stupid, stupid pencil, the Apple pencil they introduced, will not work. Uh, it won't stick because we'll remember that this is the keynote where they introduced the iPhone 6 and uh, uh, iPhone 6s. And it's really smart uh, to put a winning card with something that is, I don't know if it's an innovating, but it's less dramatic. Put in an iPad Pro, like the huge screen and that pencil is not very innovating, uh, but it they think it maybe it's a product that will sell maybe it will not sell the sure thing is that even if it won't sell it won't stick it won't stick okay now let's move on from something that doesn't actually matter to something that actually might matter this week we reported the astounding story of enchroma a great glass technology that enables the colorblind to see real colors this product has touched the hearts of millions around the world after users of the glasses started uploading their first reactions while using the glasses to youtube there are smiles there are tears there's laughter and contemplation and a sense of wonder in front of technology that really changes everything. Let's watch the commercial that started it all before we discuss the meaning of life. So Valspar is working with us at Enchroma to bring color to everyone. We developed these glasses to enable colorblind people to see color for the first time in their lives. this whole end of the of the spectrum that I just was completely not aware of. I'm like getting misty. This is this is amazing. I've never been able to see this one. And I just want to cry a little bit. <laughs> um I never realized like how much I was affected by the fact that I can't see the world like the way that other people see the world. Hmm, many, many questions. When can I buy it? Does it only come in these ugly sunglasses? Was it a technology? But let's move on to something uh, uh, bigger than that. How come we're not seeing, Gabi, more tech products that makes the world a better place? Well, if you ask the tech companies, they always strive to make the world a better place. Apple, for instance, does claim that basically her latest, uh, its latest products are making the world better. And Mark Zuckerberg feels that Facebook is a tool for the better and changed the world in a positive way. So in that aspect, I don't feel that there's any difference. I do feel that being... Uh, being uh, marketed under the hashtag uh, color for all makes you really accept this new this new product you feel like well it seems like for the better and they do say over 300 million people in the world are colorblind and then they actually say that even if you're not colorblind and i took the test i'm not um they say it can boost colors so basically when you get down to it they're just marketing some sort of a Google Glasses, but with like a worthier cause. But the, within the global outreach, there is no charity behind this. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think about this campaign? How come it worked so much? Um, Fire videos, um, which we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. This is a good example of how, where they live these days. They live in those uh, bubbles of... Uh, you know, moving uh, uh, images, uh, th things that can move us and get us emotional, and um, it's it. This is where it really works. So they did a really smart thing with that commercial, and mm -hmm. afterwards people started to do their own version of this video. We also saw that with products for uh, 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 hearing disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, where people were hearing for the first time. Uh, it's always, uh, there's something there that we know that if even someone with uh, a disability can still have a chance someday to experience the world as we do, and that whole uh, idea is what's moving this campaign. There's something religious about it too, you know, the image of coming to the temple and being cured. Yeah. You know, he walks again, and she sees colors. Literally seeing the light. Yes. Yeah, seeing the light and now the technology is the new god in these commercials and that's why maybe 
it works. Do we know more specifics about the glasses themselves? I mean, are they, can, can people buy them? Yeah, people can buy them. Uh, there's actually, uh, you can buy them on a website. They cost, they are very costly. And uh, just the glasses without, um, you know, the head, just, um, yeah, the specs. Okay. Uh, they are already costly. You can put them on any glass you want. So there's that. It doesn't have to be and so And does it have to be dark? It's yeah. dark glasses? We have to try to understand people who, who don't see color will see a bit darker, but not as you are uh, know uh, from sunglasses. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, this was the week when Disney hosted an 18-hour live broadcast around the world just to unveil and unbox a huge pile of official new Star Wars toys and merchandise items. Among this display of madness were expensive high-end tech toys that are clearly meant for geeky adults who stay young by wasting their hard-earned money on silly little robots and drones that look like the Millennium Falcon. What's going on with our culture? Let's watch this cute BB-8 robot for sale, buy it, and forget we ever asked the question. Uh, please tell me you're not going to buy no, one. No, I'm Hello. not. No, no. It's lovely, but completely, completely useless. Now, with all my geekiness, Star Wars is where I draw the line. But I do understand the appeal because this is a brand that keeps on giving for many collectors. And if you feel like you can't afford now the original 1977 uh, Star Wars merchandise, they keep coming at you with cool products. You don't get any cool, I don't know, Beatles or Indiana Jones merchandise anymore. You go for the vintage stuff. But here comes a, an extra addition to already a blooming franchise. So collectors are obviously going to freak out. Here's Shy. Hello. Yeah, you're going to buy the little thing. It's going to fall I, I, from your table and break after five minutes. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to, but it's really expensive. Um, Star Wars merchandise, as Gabby said, are really interesting because they keep on coming and there uh, are people to buy them uh, after all these years. Um, and now that they belong to Disney, they were they had the merchandise uh, copyrights were uh, uh, was belonged to um, not Fox, the original studio, but to the Lucas Lucas film. Mm -hmm. So now that Disney owns them, it's gonna be even bigger and more merchandise. And yeah, but what and about growing up, shy? Why? I don't do, know. Do you, don't like, you feel like you're an easy prey for a money, uh, for a capitalist Hollywood money-making machine? Yeah, I'm also an easy prey. Whatever I see, something that looks delicious. I'm, I'm, I'm an easy, I'm an easy prey. I know that. I, I also know how much money I have in my bank. It's too much. What Disney? How much does it cost, by the way? One hundred and fifty dollars for that robot. That doesn't do anything. It does. You can put it on patrol, and it will patrol your house. What do you mean? It's as small as a little coconut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a toy. It's a toy. Yeah. And, um, and it doesn't we, make all the cute noises that it does in the commercial. That's fake. Yeah. No, no, no. It does. It does all the cute noises. And, and that doesn't mean it, it's worth the $150. But um, the fact that toys are uh, much more sophisticated these days means, and much more expensive because mm -hmm. of that, means that uh, adults can relive their childhood by buying toys and saying, okay, this is not just an uh, um, action figure, it's an action figure that can patrol my house. And this is really smart 
on the end of uh, at Disney and people will buy it. I think there's something more to it. I think that some of the more adult collectors are definitely queuing up to buy this merchandise, keep it in the original packaging and then really jack up the price and sell it in a couple of years. Yeah. Yes, it's like uh, collecting art, isn't it? Collecting uh, merchandise for uh, geeky freaks, not freaks. People, people, <laughs> love everyone. Um, okay, and there's obviously a movie coming out sometime. December. D December, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, Shai. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabi. Thank you very much, Star Wars franchise, for making Shai happy. We thought about maybe buying you um, the thing <laughs> on The Office. We're everyone not going to do that. In. Yeah. Uh, but we thought about it. Uh, we have a website. It's i24news.tv. You are welcome to log on and watch this show and other shows here on the channel. We'll be back Monday with a brand new show of The Tube. Till then, goodbye and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye.